Hi, this is uh, Rick Frederick. I just want to review this file that is available on my website, richardfrederick.com, uh, under files. And this is the problem of combining multiple tests of malingering or multiple tests called performance validity indicators. It's the sort of problem that arises whenever a, an evaluator gives many tests um, whether they're standalone tests or embedded measures of malingering <clears throat> to evaluate whether somebody is cooperating during an assessment of cognitive abilities. And in this example, um, we are able to set the false positive rate per test. We're able to set the number of tests that were given. I have seen as many as 28 different tests given uh, by an examiner. And so let's just look at what this file tells you. First, there's some text up here to help you orient yourself. This is uh, two boxes. There are two boxes here that you can type into. So we can set a very conservative false positive rate. There are some people who publish cutoff scores at 2% at false positive rate. That means for every 100 people who are not faking, who are giving good effort, the test will nonetheless identify them as faking. And then we can say the number of tests here. We're going to give 10 such tests. And then this box will say what the actual false positive rate is. Now, let's just identify what this means. This means if I have a decision that you get any positive score out of these 10, then you're a faker. And let's go up here. This is the sort of language that I see often in, in neuropsychology reports. <clears throat> the cutoffs used on these measures uh, are designed to be specific with a low false positive rate. Are th they're designed to be more specific than sensitive, which means that, uh, and it's often not true. And people say this, but it's not true. They're, they're often willing to have false positive rates as high as 10, um, there's some tests out there that have false positive rates of 30 percent, and you know not all of them do, but there's some prominent tests out there that have very high false positive rates in the way that that they're commonly used. And so, if we if our definition is that you get one positive score, your box turns red here. You're a faker. All of these people here, 100, none of them were faking. They just happen to be given test after test of faking. And this is what happens as they get a positive score. Now the problem of how many scores are positive is a different one. And, and I have a different file to evaluate that and a different lecture uh, uh, on my website. That's a much more complicated problem. But just the idea that one positive score will occur and the reason is we're responding to this statement that I see uh, very often in, in, in a variety of different neuropsychologist reports. Here's what they're saying. Well, we designed these tests to be specific with a low false positive rate, much more specific than sensitive. And this means that some persons who are exaggerating will pass these measures. And, and so if you pass them all, they, they say, well, you can still be a faker and pass them. I mean, you just can't win. But in contrast, this is the this is the false statement. In contrast, persons who give good effort almost always perform normally. Now, here's people who are performing normally and giving their best effort. If you just want to keep sampling this and see how, you know, just keep typing in this number here, and you see what actually happens. Let's go to a more likely false positive rate, say 12%. This happens, all, all these people are going to be called faking if the rule is one positive score. And let me just tell you, I mean, it's very possible to get many positive scores when you're not faking. Uh, just to get one positive score is as high as 72%.
And so when you, you look at the number of tests given, you look at the false positive rates for them, you have to be very skeptical about the meaning of one or two or three or four positive scores. It often doesn't mean anything at all except that the test is unreliable, the test has a high false positive rate, that the, the neuropsychologist or the examiner is willing to, to misidentify people as fakers just to catch fakers. And, and that's the problem. All right, I hope this is helpful for you. If, if you have questions about it, please send me an email, rickfrederick at gmail.com. Thank you very much.